so communication, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, uh, if people communicate honestly, then there is better information and then it's better for both parties. However, on the other hand, if uh, people use communication to be deceptive, uh, then it might be beneficial for the person who's communicating, but for the other person, he loses out, right? Uh, so very specifically, my work looks at uh, what features of an environment hinders or fosters truth-telling, and what can we say about uh, uh, who is going to be more or less likely to use communication uh, to further their own motives. Typically, how an economics experiment works is we would have uh, uh, subjects, as we call them, who would be typically undergraduate students of a university. They would come into a room, which we call the experimental lab, and they would interact with one, one another uh, through computer terminals. A few of the key things that we want uh, to have in this environment is that these decisions should be privately made and they should be anonymous. So there shouldn't be concerns of social image concerns and so on affecting their decisions. One of the most interesting forms of communication is a promise where you are telling the other person you're going to take a certain path, a certain action. So you're communicating about your intentions. It's very important, especially for economists, because a lot of economic transactions involves social risk. So for example, let's say uh, a lender, when he's lending out money, he, he may not be sure whether the borrower is going to return the money back. Or for example, a buyer who um, uh, wants to purchase a product, he may not be sure about the quality of the product. So in these situations, communication can be used to persuade another person to take an action that you would want. It can foster trust. It can alleviate some of this information asymmetry. What I find is that this holds true for individuals. So when the individual talk, talks to another person, this holds. But once we move from that paradigm and look at groups of people communicating, we see this positive effect of communication no longer tends to hold. What we do find is that uh, it's more like a diffusion of responsibility. Because when you're acting as a team, you make one decision as a team, and that decision m may not be attributed completely to you. So there is. Uh, some gray zone in the audience's mind that you know who is actually making this decision. And individuals kind of use this sort of a moral wiggle room to take a more selfish action for themselves. And that's what's driving uh, the differences. So, so in principle, I think the only way we can make something better is if we have a better, better understanding ourselves of uh, what people would do, how people behave, right? So uh, knowing how people respond to uh, various features in their environments, I think would help us design uh, better environments which can promote more cooperation and uh, uh, just better, more successful partnerships.